I'm no social scientist and I haven't done a survey. I mean, I, I don't pretend that I know what John Q. Citizen thinks about this. <clears throat> but I've lived in prison for a long time now. And I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question, without exception, deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. There's no question about it. The FBI's own study on serial homicide shows that the most common interest among serial killers is pornography. Those of us who are, who have been so much influenced by violence in the media, in particular pornographic violence, are not some kinds of inherent monsters. We are your sons and we are your husbands. And we grew up in regular families. And pornography can reach out and snatch a kid out of any house today. He, he, told off defense attorney Richard Tagmeyer today in court. Toole says he's sick of all the questions about a murder in the spring 17 years ago and says he's sick of all the mind games. But Toole appears to be the only one in the courtroom playing mind games by repeatedly changing his story. In a taped interview in 1986, Toole described the massage parlor murder in grisly detail. He tied two women up, he says, raped them, stabbed one, shot the other, then burned down their business. Business. But in court today, Tool says he made it all up just by doing some research in the prison's law library. You got everybody's cases after the day of trial. You got newspaper clippings in the law library. Anybody got common sense ought to know given where you can do that any kind of case you want in the law library. Tool says he took wild guesses at police questions until he got the answers right. But in the very next breath, Tool changed his story again. He hinted he might have told the truth on the tape, but is afraid of being prosecuted for it. That tells me so. That's the only way I can stand up for myself. As I had these off, I could slap your teeth out, couldn't I? Slut. over to Wayne County Third Circuit Court, Criminal Division for further proceedings, the arraignment on the information, date and time will be June 26, 2015, at 9 o'clock a.m. Is there anything else? Nothing further. I have a question. Um, to my understanding, to get a trial is to get to the truth, right? I'm already saying that I did it. I'm freely giving myself and accepting life in prison. My son is worth that to me. So what I don't understand is from what I heard today, why the prosecutors are dragging their feet. If I'm already giving myself to you like, hey, I did this, what's the problem? You get what I'm saying? I'm not going to come back like, oh, I didn't understand my rights. I'm not a coward. You get what I'm saying? All I know is this. My son is eight years old right now. He's going to forget a lot about me, okay? When he look back at all this media coverage from these bottom feeders, I don't want him to see that I stood here like a coward. I did what I did, and I did what I did for my baby, period. He's going to see me standing up, taking my responsibility. I will happily do life in prison for my child. That's period. So I don't understand what's, what, what other paperwork is there to do. All right. Well, Ms. Blair, I appreciate what you just indicated to the court. These are some very serious charges. And, very and I understand all of them. If y'all give me an seen opportunity it, now. Give me an opportunity. I've confessed three times. I'm not going to stop saying what I did. I you get what I'm saying? I understand. These are very serious charges with very serious consequences. If you were to plead guilty to a first degree murder charge, that is life in prison without the possibility of parole. I know this. Okay. Understand also that that's a very unusual position for someone to take. What well, I did was unusual. Uh, yeah. But it's normal for me. Because no eight year old boy, he was six at this time, he was being raped. No. 
You understand what I'm saying? No. Don't nobody know what he went through. Nobody know. All y'all know is what I did. All I know is why I did it. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, unusual as it is, it's like... Well, what I'm asking... I'm not giving y'all the runaround, so it's like, what is taking so long? Get it? Yeah, I, I understand. What I'm asking, though, is that your next court date is going to be a week from today. I want you to take that week and think very seriously. And it sounds like you've already yes. had your mind made up. Yes. But I want you to take that week and to think long and hard about the consequences of pleading guilty to a first-degree murder charge. I'm not going to say that you can't do it. Nobody's dragging don't their need feet. A week. Listen to me. But we want this to be done very carefully. We want it to be done right. Okay? Y'all got the paperwork saying I'm confident. Yes, ma'am. And I just told you, my son's going to forget a lot of things about me, but he will not forget. He goes on media websites or whatever, looking back over the years. When he is old enough to understand exactly what I did, I want him to look back. He's going to know how important he was and still is to me. I'm happily saying, life in prison. If you had death penalty, I would take that. I don't care. That's my baby, period. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not changing anything. I don't need the week to think about it. It's just what it is. Let me have the parties approach for a moment. I'm sick on this box. <coughs> because what you want is to die. That's correct. That's the only thing worthy of a warrior, I guess you could say. Death. Hughes wants to be put to death. He admits killing a man in Ohio, stabbing him to death. Then on the run from Ohio police with his girlfriend and two other people, Hughes says he killed Valentin Kurlachuk, shot him in the mouth in this rest area north of Platte City, Missouri. Hughes says he had to kill to regain something very precious to him, control. Control over his passengers. I pulled into this rest area and that was a way for me to gain control to to show, I don't know, I guess I would assert my dominance, I guess you could say. That'd be the way to put it. And it shut everybody up for a while. One man dead, three passengers petrified. Later they wanted out, but I told them that nobody was getting out of that truck, period, without, without a bullet in their head. And I asked, did anybody want out? <laughs> and they said no. So You don't feel bad about killing uh, anyone? Not personally, that I've personally done myself, no. I just view things as objects, people, animals, the trees, cars, they're just all the same to me. What do, what do you see in their face right before they die? Usually fear. John Hughes admits to killing people in Mississippi, Missouri, and Ohio. As far as the murders that I've been a part of, but there's been quite a few. A dozen? At least. Twenty? Under. Somewhere around the 15. Somewhere around in there. Hughes doesn't believe the death penalty. It's my firm belief that death would bring me untold peace and freedom. That's my personal belief. If I died today, I would be free and I would be at peace. For years, that's exactly what I wanted. But I had to fight for my life just like I did on June 4th, 2008, because I realized how selfish it would be for me to escape accountability for this mess that I've created. I have two brothers, two sisters, several nieces and nephews, a mom, a dad, eight aunts. Nine uncles, over 20 cousins that I've grown up with, as well as countless friends all of whom would suffer greatly if I took my own life or if I allocuted and begged for the death penalty and then got it. I did not drag Travis through the mud. I protected Travis's reputation for years. I did say he was an influential person. I kept his skeletons in the closet all to my own detriment for years. What I testified to was not false. They were not made up. They were not things that I wanted to get out into public either. But when I was on the stand, I told the truth. Your Honor was also here during the second trial when a lot of evidence came to light that supported my testimony from people that never even knew me but knew Travis. I do remember as I testified to this, I'm sorry, I think I would have testified to this 
in the 2014 trial. I do remember I do remember the moment when the knife went into Travis's throat and he was conscious. This is the man investigators say shot and killed Master Public Safety Officer Sandy Rogers. Do you want today's grain for an attorney? I don't care. Ah, Mr. Jones. Ah, ah. Today, Joshua Tremaine Jones stood before Judge Donna Williamson for a bond hearing, and after mouthing profanities to the few reporters in the room, he cussed at the judge, too. Do you have the income to hire an attorney on your own? Does it look like it? I don't know, sir. I don't have any idea. I just ask that you answer my questions. What I saw in court today was a very disturbing individual. Um, he appeared to show no remorse for the actions that he had taken. Um, he was disrespectful to the judge and the others in the courtroom while he was there. It was something Captain Troy Elwell with Aiken County Sheriff's Office had never seen before. It's a, it's a crime that, that can't be undone. It's a terrible incident. Um, and again, he just showed you know that much more disrespect. Honorable David L. Fury presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, uh, to my left is uh, Nicholas Burling, Joggett County Assistant Prosecutor, Mark Bartolotta, Joggett County Assistant Prosecutor, and from the Lake County Prosecutor's Office, Karen Colwell. Thank you, and you can make it from where you where you sit. What? You can make it seated where you where you are, if you would. I will never forget our son Demetrius. On days that my back hurt, he would put my shoes on and tie them up for me. He would come home from school and he would fix us something to eat before his father came home and cooked us dinner. He was always there for me and I for him. I will miss Demetrius, and I have enough memories to last me a lifetime. That child stole my baby's life, and he should never be able to do this to anyone ever again. Thank you. You're really lucky there's so many police in this room right now. You can smile all you want. My family will move on, not you. You have ruined your life, not to mention Adams. He even gave you a ride. Nick even gave you a ride from school. He was thinking about inviting you back to that, to that table because he felt sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Things I was looking forward to, I will never get to see. My baby brother graduate high school, go to college, graduate college, get married, have children. I will never be an aunt and my children will never know their uncle. I could go on and on about how many things the shooter has taken away from us, but the most important <clears throat> but the most important thing is he took away the life of not only my only brother, my parents' only son, but the lives of two other boys as well. He took the lives of three young men who were doing what they were supposed to do go to school. After today, I refuse to give him even a second of my thoughts. He is repulsive. 
We don't speak his name and we never will. He will be forgotten as he rots in prison. And I will be glad knowing his existence every day, every minute, every breath is controlled by rules and that he is away from society, locked up in a cage like the animal he is. 